Hello, I'm John Mark Stoudy, the President and CEO of Riverside Resources. This is another version of John Mark's Geo Tutorial. Today we're going to discuss about historic work, use of historic information, and how it can be cost saving, but also some of the pitfalls and some of the things to watch out for. Here in Riverside's office of Riverside Resources is a good place to look at historic information. What do historic workings mean? What is the reason for using of historic data? First off is it can save a lot of money. It can build upon previous work. One of the key factors is that likely it's an area that there was probably something economic to extract before. Here is a map from Durango, Mexico. The map here shows some of the historic works, some of the old drilling, some of the old mining. This historic work is being used by Riverside Resources to expand, to grow upon. Although this data may not comply with current regulatory rules, that doesn't mean it's not necessarily bad data. It could be good data. And it shows you that there was something of valuable there in the past. Now it could be found to be much bigger, expanded upon quite a bit. This gives a new opportunity using historic data to come up with new ideas, to expand upon what's possible using geophysics, geochemistry from the past, and using mining from the past to then find what might be bigger, better, and to save money without having to redo things, but to grow and go beyond that. Historic data and historic workings. How do we do this? What techniques can we use? First off is we could use libraries. They are troves of historic information, old files, old reports, individuals who know things, previous work, previous reports, things like that are vital into building and using old databases. From that, we can build our knowledge of from where things were to what might be possible. Once we get that data, it comes in four key ways. One of the key ways is in geophysics, particularly in Canada, in Australia, in areas that have a lot of cover. Geophysical techniques may have been useful in the past and can be reinterpreted today toward leading for new discoveries. Secondly is geochemistry, particularly old drill results, assay results are really important things that we can use. A third one that we really like to use is historic mining. It's always good to go where you've done mining before and in fact those databases of what was mined both chemically, what type of minerals, what type of assemblages are very helpful. The fourth one that we really like to use is geology. In those old reports looking for key geologic features reinterpreting what was done in the past with new eyes, with new ways of doing things. For example, the Pinoles project of Riverside Resource. Here's a sample taken from underground that we've cut, has from the high grade underground mine. This historically has good geochemistry, good geology, and now we can try to see, could it be much, much bigger? Going deeper and following up on that historic work is a key way to save money and to make new big discoveries. Why do we use this historic working? Why do we use this historic data? Well, one of the key things we need to do is we need to look in old books and old reports and what we do is in that we find for drilling using the historic drilling, historic drill maps and things like that or historic studies of mineralogy and geology help us to know where to save money, where maybe they've had success in the past, where the drilling previously or exploration previously hit high grades, that helps us focus. Focus saves money, saves time. Also, we use that historic work to know what they hit in the past so we can therefore know maybe some new ways, new things to interpret. So as we go forward with drill programs, much of the time they're initiated based on historic drill work. With those drill reports and with that drill work, you can lower your risk and have a better chance replicating what people have done and then expanding on it to find if it could be much larger, more economic and potentially grow into become something quite significant. Where are these historic work programs most valuable? They're in places that have had a lot of historic previous work or previous mining. For example, in Mexico, in western Mexico here, we see a location with lots of small mines. Those small mines in many cases have become big mines 
through additional work and following up upon the historic work. Historic work is very useful in places that have a mining culture or mining history where you could expand from outcrop out under cover. Tracing that to become something much larger, maybe making a discovery based upon small known locations. Historic logs and historic reports, for example, these from drill reports from one of the mines and one of the mining projects in western Mexico shows all the drilling history. Well, in that drilling history is mineralogical studies, is descriptions. Those descriptions today might be reinterpreted. So going back to that old paper archived information is a vital tool. It saves lots of money and helps you to focus on new interpretations. That's what was done at the Gold Corpse project called Penasquito, which is now one of the largest gold and zinc mines in all of Mexico. And yet it was a small location that had historic information, historically been worked, and now with this use of historic data has been drilled and discovered and now built to become a giant mine. That's one example. Another example in western Sonora, Mexico would be the Chinate mine operated by Orico in a region where Riverside Resources and other companies are currently exploring around these old mines. And in fact there, that project has now become a mine. The old historic data was able to be put together extensive follow-up drilling out under cover, made a big discovery, and now it's a large open pit creating thousands of jobs and amazing amounts of wealth from that old historic data. How do we use this historic information or data? One way we do we use it is that we can find the new drill holes. For example, here is a map of historic geophysics, the geophysics of IP, another geo tutorial we talk about the geophysics well this historic information helps us to see where there may be more quartz veins these quartz veins have gold so from the geophysics we can see the different trends in those different trends so from the historic data we then knew to go out to those locations and sample float when we sampled the float we then found other samples that ran high-grade gold we wouldn't have known if we didn't have the historic data and using geophysics we knew right where to go. So within a very short period of time we used that historic information to find gold on the surface. That's one of the things that prospect generators do. We generate properties or prospects out of the historic data. So using this historic information, we then computerize that information. As we computerize, we can rotate the image, we can see what's going on, and we can see where it maybe can be expanded. So one of the key things we do is use that historic data and then go to the field. In the field, we collect our own samples to verify and then to try to expand and build out to new targets. Building upon the past can help create a profitable future. Standing on the shoulders of what people have done in the past can allow you to reach new heights and make new discoveries. The use of historic data is vital and can pay attention to what have been some of the other social, environmental, community, other challenges that have been for the project that have had to face and also taking on those things in ways that can make it work. Paying attention to all those factors as you go forward with a profitable and, and a charismatic way to build a new project. Myself, I am John Mark Stoudy, the president of Riverside Resources, and this has been another edition of John Mark's Geo Tutorial.